Good morning, everyone. I'd like to, uh, to talk about weed suppression in intercropping. And just to give a little bit of a context to that. Oh, now the wrong screen is moving. Ah, here it is. So weeds we are all aware of, they are important constraints in agricultural production. Uh, they cause yield reduction due to competition for resources with the crop. And if you look at the control, then there is a very strong re reliance on chemical compounds. And these chemical compounds, they have negative side effects, both for the environment, but sometimes also for human health. And on top of that, their sustainability is endangered due to herbicide resistance occurring if they are used too frequently. So evidently, there is a strong need for alternative control op options and diversification of weed management. And we can reach that through making a stronger use of cultural uh, control measures. And that is also often referred to as ecological weed management. So the question here is, is there a role in this for intercropping? So we can also, also ask ourselves then, do intercrops provide a different environment? And of course, if you grow an intercrop, that is, that is very evident, but we have to look at that from the perspective of the weed. And weeds, I think we have to realize, they differ a lot from some of the other biotic constraints, uh, like the pathogens that Maria was talking about. For the weeds, there is no movement within the season. They are sessile or immobile, and that's unlike insects, which are searching for host plants. That, that, that is not going on with weeds. If we compare them to pathogens, pathogens are usually polycyclic, but weeds are monocyclic, so they have just a single generation per season. That means that also spore dispersal is not an issue. So all the positive advantages of intercrops that arise from uh, barrier effects, distance effects, dilution <coughs> effects, they are not there with weeds. And finally, of course, if we look at weeds, they act at the same trophic level as the cropland. And that means the main in mode of interaction between weeds and crops is through competition. So the question then becomes, does an intercrop modify the competitive environment? And I think that depends very strongly on the kind of intercrop that we are working with. What is very important is that the crop species, they are intimately mixed because otherwise there is not a real difference for the weed. Uh, for instance, if we look at a <clears throat> spatial component of an intercrop, we have strip intercropping, we can have an alternate row design, we can have a mixed design, and evidently with a mixed design, there is a very intimate mix between the two components of the, of the, of the intercrop. With strip intercrop, that's very different. Uh, for a weed, it would not make a lot of difference whether it's in the middle of a strip of three or six or 18 meters wide, or whether it's in a pure stand of that crop. And so whether there is a different competitive environment very much depends on the kind of intercrop you're working with. And the same in fact holds for the temporal component of an, of an intercrop. Uh, are we dealing with a relay intercrop where there's only, uh, where the crops, the two crops are present in the field only for a relatively short period of time, or are we dealing with a full intercrop? where both species are present throughout the intercropping uh, growing season. I think those are very important aspects. So do intercrops provide better weed suppression? And to, to answer that question, we framed the question a little bit different. We say, are we able to predict weed suppression in intercrops based on the weed suppression of the species the intercrop is composed of? And if we are able to do so, then probably we have a much better understanding on of the mechanisms that are operative within the intercrop and also the, the relevance of specific intercrop characteristics like which kind of species are you combining in an, in an intercrop, what is the mixing ratio and what is their total plant density. So a very simple comparison just based on the species a mixture com is composed of is to compare the weed biomass that is actually observed in an intercrop and to compare that with the average of the weed biomasses that are found in the pure stands. So, sorry for that. So over here, we have a weekly competitive crop and this is the amount of weed biomass that you might find. This is a much stronger a crop where you find a much lower amount of weed biomass 
and now the average is somewhere here. And then you can look at what is the result in the intercrop. Will it be a higher amount of wheat biomass than the average, or will it be a lower amount of wheat biomass? Now that is the comparison which we made with the help of a data set uh, that was obtained by, by uh, Chun Feng, Chun Feng Gu, who's also in this uh, in this course. She made a literature survey. She collected various data, and based on that, we compared the actually observed wheat biomass in intercrop, and we compared it with the predicted one. And the predicted, in this case, was the arithmetic mean of the two pure stands. This is uh, put expressed on a logarithmic scale because there was a huge difference in the amount of wheat biomass that was observed in the different crops and in the different intercrops. Now, what we note here, what is very obvious, is that the prediction mostly overestimates what was actually found. And that implies that the suppression in intercrop is much better than expected based on the average of the individual uh, crop species. That, that's very promising, right? So that in fact is in line with an, a study that we did earlier on where we made where we made uh, constructed intercrops composed of leek and leek is a very open uh, crop. It has uh, pl plants with an upright stature and the, it leaves a lot of space for weeds to develop. If you compare that with celery, which is much more leafy and much better to able to suppress the weeds, uh, it, it, it's very different. So the idea of this intercrop is that celery now protects the leek against uh, against weeds. And what you can note in that case is that in fact what we try to do is to exploit the dominance of this better suppressing weed to give a, to get a good weed suppression in the intercrop. Now we made some additional observations in this system and this is light interception. The green line represents the light interception of celery, and you can see that it had a re rapid canopy development and it reached a light interception of nearly 100%. And leek, as you might also have noticed from the picture, is uh, developing much slower and its light interception lags behind. Now, if you look at the, the, at the light interception of the intercrop, we can note that this light interception is much closer to that of celery than it is to leek. And that is what we refer to as selection, had the more competitive species taking up a larger share in the intercrop. So that is definitely a mechanism that is operative in intercrops. We can also make the comparison in a different way. We could say, okay, here we have the poorly suppressing uh, crop species with a high amount of wheat biomass. Here we have the strongest suppressor. And now we look where we can find the wheat biomass that is obtained in intercrop. Is it even more than the wheat biomass that we find in the weak suppressor? Is it even lower than the stronger wheat suppressor? Or is it somewhere in between? And for this comparison, we used the data from Lippmann and Dijk, who made a, a very influential publication in 1993 on the influence of intercrops and crop rotation in wheat management. And we also took the data of GU. And well, there's a very remarkable comparison here. You can see that just about 50% is found somewhere in the middle and also more or less 50% is having a wheat biomass that is even lower than what you find in the strongest suppressing crop. And so typically based on these data, we can conclude that in many of the intercrops, there is more going on than just the selection effect. Now, what kind of mechanism is responsible for that? That is what we asked ourselves. And well, as I already mentioned, there is a selection effect. So combining a poorly competitive crop with a strong competitive crop will in fact protect the weaker against weeds. That's just a method of, of, of competition known as the selection effect. Of course, what might also be occurring is a complementarity effect. That crops, they differ and they might occupy partly different niches. And that might imply that the intercrop occupies a much wider niche, thereby reducing the space and opportunities for weeds. And that is typically an effect that will only be observed in the intercrop because it's the result of combining those two species. 
And so it's typically a synergistic effect. On top of that, we should also not forget that the result might be due to a density effect because many of the intercrops are laid out in an additive design, meaning that in fact the relative density of the intercrop is higher than the density of the, of the, of the component crops. So the question is how to disentangle those effects to see what actually is going on. And for that, we made a different evaluation of intercrop performance and we made use of some well-established equations for plant-plant competition. And we made use of the weed suppressive ability of the component species that the intercrop is made of. And that is reflected in the weed biomass that is observed in the pure stands of species one and species two. And next to that, we also looked at the mixing ratio and the total plant density of the intercrop. And so D stands for the the actual plant density of either an intercrop or the same crop in pure stand. And the ratio between that is what we call the relative density. Now, if we add those two relative densities, we get the relative density total. If this relative density total is one, it means we are dealing with a replacement design. If the, the sum of P1 and P2 exceeds one, we are dealing with an additive design. The mixing ratio can be calculated as the relative this in fact the mixing fraction. Okay, so if we look at uh, these equations for competition, the time is too short to go into a lot of detail, but just to give you a bit of the flavor, what we have here is a single wheat plant without competition. The weight is expressed, the single, the, 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 weight, the weight of that single wheat plant is expressed as gram per plant, and it's uh, inversely related to this parameter. And this parameter, in fact, also expresses individual plant weight, but in a different way. It tells you how many plants you have per gram of biomass. Okay, if you now look at a wheat plant in a wheat population stand, then the individual plant weight will go down, and that is because intraspecific competition among those wheat plants will occur. And this intraspecific competition is composed of what we call an intraspecific intra competition parameter and the number of wheat plants. And the product of those two expresses the competitive effect of the weeds, uh, of, of the weeds itself on individual wheat plant dry weight. Now, if those weeds are found in the crop stand, then next to the intraspecific competition, there will also be interspecific competition from the crop. And again, this is composed of a product between an intraspecific competition parameter and crop plant density. This product, in fact, represents the competitive stress of the crop on the weed. Now, if you move from individual plant dry weight to weed biomass per unit area, then what we have to do is we have to multiply the number of weeds with their individual plant dry weight. And in a pure stand crop, it looks like this. Here we can see the interspecific competitive effect of crop one. Here we can see the interspecific competitive effect of crop two. In an intercrop, both of them will contribute to uh, the competitive stress on the weed. And we can see that we have again here the interspecific competitive component. We here have the crop plant density, and this is the fraction, the relative density of this crop compared to its density in pure stand. And the same holds for uh, the second crop. Now, ideally, we should conduct an experiment with many different uh, crop plant densities. And if we would do that in di different mixing ratios, then we would be able to determine those parameter values. But many of those, the experiments that are published in literature and that also we've conducted ourselves, they do not have that 
uh, detailed information because they are simply laid out in a number of in a restricted number of treatments. So we should go for another way. And uh, what we try to do is, is it possible to substitute the equations for the pure stand into the equation of the intercrop uh, because they are composed of the same of the same uh, uh, parameters? And does that provide us additional information on what actually is going on? Well, in the end, after some mathematics, we, we, we were able to do so. And what we observed is that the wheat biomass in the intercrop, in fact, is not equal to the arithmetic mean, but it's equal to the harmonic mean. In this case, the weighted harmonic mean, because also the fraction of crop one and the relative density of crop two, they are, they are important, of course. So what is going on here is that we take the inverse of the weed biomass that is found in the pure stand one. We take the inverse of the weed biomass found in crop two. We then add them and we then take the inverse and that will result in a weed biomass that is found in intercrop. And just to give you an example, if the weed biomass in crop one is 20 grams per meter square, the weed biomass in crop two is four grams per meter square, then the arithmetic mean would be 12 grams per meter square. But based on the calculation using the harmonic mean and assuming a replacement design where both P1 and P2 are equal to 0.5, we can calculate that the weed biomass, the expected weed biomass in intercrop is equal to 6.7 grams per meter square. So what it shows us in, in fact is that wheat suppression in intercrop is more strongly influenced by the strongest competitor. It's much closer to the result found in the strong wheat suppressive crop than it is compared to the uh, poorly competitive crop. And just to give you a feel for that, these are pictures from uh, the experiment of uh, Ali El Hakim, who's also in this course. This is oilseed radish. This is fetch, but you can hardly see veg because it's more or less overgrown by weeds. And this is the mixture of oilseed radish and veg. Now, the amount of wheat biomass that was found in oilseed radish was two grams per meter square. The amount of wheat biomass found in vitia in common veg was 57. And what was found in the mixture is only 5.7. So it's much lower than the arithmetic mean. And here it also clearly shows what's going on. Uh, veg is not growing very well, so it's being uh, overtaken by all seed radish, and there is hardly a difference between the development of those two canopies. So it illustrates a kind of the, the selection effect that is assumed if we uh, make use of the harmonic mean. And this is the same combination, well, not exactly the same combinations here. Black oat is used as a pure stand. Again, in combination with common veg. This is the 50-50 mixture. This is the amount of biomass found in black oat in the pure stand. This is the amount found in common veg. And this is the amount found in the mixture. And this is the harmonic mean. So it exactly corresponds to that. So this is this clearly shows what is going on in the mixture. Is one of the crops is not very competitive then it will be partly overtaken by the more stronger crop and that results in a wheat suppression that is much closer to that of the poorly competitive crop than it is in the, the strongly competitive crop than it is to the poorly competitive crop. OK, so we also made a comparison with the data of uh, of Gu, of Chunfeng, and we said, OK, let's calculate the harmonic mean based on the wheat biomass of the two crops and then we made the comparison and here we can see that in general the predictions are very close to what is actually observed in the field indicating that this calculation based on the harmonic mean gives a, a, a very reasonable prediction of the wheat biomass that can be expected in an intercrop so what does that imply well in fact, the equations that we use to arrive at the harmonic mean, they simply assume the, the, the competition that is going on in a pure stand. And so it in fact accounts for both the selection 
and a density effect. But it does not account for a synergistic effect and an effect that might emerge because you are mixing the two species. So in fact, this good correspondence uh, suggests that complementarity is not very relevant for weed suppression. And, and I was quite surprised uh, by, the, to be, the, by this, to be honest. Okay, so how does this look like? We can have a look at that. This is a replacement design. This is the weed biomass that is found in the poorly competitive crop. Over here, we have the weed biomass found in the more stronger weed suppressor. The ratio between those two is, is what is, uh, we, we, we use parameter A for that. And what we observe here, if we compare the poorly competitive crop with the stronger competitive crop, and this is uh, the intercrop with different fractions of the more strong uh, competitive of the more strongly competitive crop, then we find that already the addition of a relatively small amount of the stronger competitor already makes a major difference. It clearly reduces the weed biomass that is found compared to what is found with the poorly competitive crop. And something similar is found over here where we've made the calculations for an additive design. So in this case, the density of the poorly weed suppressor is kept uh, constant. And what we did is we simply added the stronger competitive, the stronger competitor. And then you see the same pattern, just a small fraction of the uh, or the, the small addition of the stronger competitor already gives a very strong reduction in, in weed biomass over here. And even if you look at the highest density, you can frequently find that the weed biomass is even lower than what is observed in, um, in the pure stand of, of that crop. So clearly uh, showing the density effect. So the main conclusion is that selection and an increased plant density are the most important mechanisms of weed suppression in intercrops. And there are clear indications that complementarity does not play an important role if, it, if we talk about weed suppression. Well, to put it back into context, crop diversification and weed management. The first component is diversification in space, the intercropping that we just had a look at. I think the main benefit here is that a poorly competitive crop can be protected against weeds by mixing it with a more strongly weed suppressive crop. But we have, there are some cautions here, because if the stronger weed suppressive crop is too strongly competitive and we add too much of it in the intercrop, then it might develop into a weed. It might outcompete at the other crop. We also have to realize that if we design an intercropping system and then we, if we would have a row crop and we simply would add a second crop in between, that it has serious implications for the options for curative weed control. And finally, uh, we also have to realize that if we are making use of intercropping systems, then we are using more crops in a single season. And the question, of course, is does that leave us a sufficient number of crops that can be used to design a crop rotation? And a crop rotation will only be functional if we have crops that are very different from one another. And breaking a disease cycle, for instance, or breaking the buildup of a wheat population will only be realized through crop rotation if the crops in that crop rotations are relatively different. And so apart from diversification in space, we also have diversification in time, that's crop rotation. And crop rotation, I've not discussed it here, but it's frequently proven to be a very important pillar of integrated wheat management systems. And the main benefit here is that it prevents the proliferation of a few difficult to control wheat species. We get a much more, um, we get a much higher diversity in wheat species if we are making use of a crop rotation, but usually those weeds are found at relatively low levels. And so the alternation of crops that differ in timing, the sowing time or the harvest time, and also the options we have to control the weeds in a curative way 
or with the help of cultural control options, they differ a lot for different crops and that is what we make use of. So my conclusion would be that if we are talking about uh, weed management and crop diversification, the diversification in time offers much more perspective than the diversification in, spa in space. Diversification in space is relevant, but only in very specific uh, situations. Thank you for your attention.